Hello, Connie here. Today we're going to talk about cadences. This is a tutorial that goes along with the workbook called How to Compose Beautiful Piano Music. If you'd like to get the workbook, the link is down in the description. And also there is a link to all the previous tutorials that we've had up to this point. So if there's something we talk about that you missed, you can go back and, and catch that video too. You can uh, get by without the workbook, uh, especially on uh, units like the one we're doing today. But for, I would really recommend getting the workbook just for the first unit that we did. We went through and we wrote every chord in every major key signature and it, you have it as a reference. And in a workbook, it's all in one place. It's not paper is going to get lost. So just get the workbook for that reason only but you won't need it for something like today. So if you want to just learn about cadences, here we go. All right, cadences. This is a page from the workbook. A cadence is two chords that happen at the end of a phrase. We have worked on chord progressions and how to write chord progressions in the past couple of videos. So following those same rules that we learned, when you have two right there at the end, that's what a cadence is. Okay, there's different types of cadences. Right there it says what it is. We're going to jump right into it. The first type we're going to learn is called a half cadence. It is when any chord in the, in the key leads to a five chord. And that's the end of the cadence. And I'm going to be playing these for you. The sound isn't going to translate really well into the video, but... Uh, you'll be able to get the idea and you can play it on your own instrument also. Here it is. And the reason it's called a half cadence is because it only sounds half finished. Remember in, I think it's tutorial number three, we talked about chord families and functions. Number five is the dominant and it has this pull back to tonic. You want to just go home from there. And so when it ends on five, you're left hanging. That's why it's called a half cadence. <laughs> You see how it just is, you just want to finish. <laughs> Something. It just needs to resolve. So that is a half cadence from anything to a five chord. In this example, it was a one to a five. Now we're going to write a half cadence. Okay, so let's say we're going to go from a four chord to a five chord. So right down here, four. And a four chord, the inversion that we usually use, which we learned in the last couple videos, there it is. We're always in the key of C. So a four chord is going to be F, A, and C. And then it resolves to a five chord. And we'll just go right here. It's a G, B, D is the five chord. And in the right hand, now we have not talked about how to put a right hand in or what the melody is. We will get into that in coming up in the next units. So we'll just put a F. G, because those fit with the chord. In fact, they're the root of the chord. Here's what that sounds like. I you just want to finish it. It's left hanging. Okay, that's what a half cadence is. They'll leave you hanging. Okay, and they sound incomplete. They leave you hanging like a question. A phrase ending with a half cadence is usually called a question phrase. And composers usually follow that phrase with an authentic cadence, a phrase that ends with an authentic cadence called an answer phrase. It ends a lot more um, settled and home. Okay, an authentic cadence is when a phrase ends with a five or a seven to a one chord. That's the dominant to the tonic. And here it is, five to one. Very finished, very solid. All right, write an authentic cadence in the key of C. So you can use a five or a seven. I don't usually recommend using using a seven. Use it very sparingly. We're going to use a five. Okay, let's go five. How about um, D, G, B, and we'll do like a G with a half note and a B with a half note to a one chord, C, uh, 
I'm just going to end this a little differently. Let's see. That is a C E G, but let's move up to an E G and a C on top. And then this can go up to a C up here. All right, that is a five to a one or an authentic cadence. Here's the sound of it. See, you're home. It sounds finished. All right. Those authentic cadences, those five to one, can be either perfect or imperfect. A perfect authentic cadence has to follow all three of these rules. First, it has to be a five chord, not a seven. Second, both chords have to be in root position. And root position means that the letter name of the chord is at the bottom. So if we're playing a dominant or a five chord and we're in the key of C, that five chord starts with a G, so G has to be the bottom note. And the highest note of the one chord has to be the tonic. Okay, now let's go back here. We just wrote a, an authentic cadence. But look, this is not in root position because the root of the four chord, or of that five chord, is a G. So I should have done a G down here in the bass to be perfect. And this is C is the, is the root of the one chord, and it was not in the bass. I should have done a C right there to make it perfect. I did not. So this was an imperfect authentic cadence. All right, so we're going to write a perfect authentic cadence. Both chords have to be in root position. This one has to be a 5, so it has to be a G on the bottom. G, B, D. And then it's going to go to a C with a C on the bottom because we're as always in this workbook, we're in the key of C. And then the right hand, the melody can be pretty much the same. Okay, let's see how that sounds. Sounds very good, very perfect. Okay, now an imperfect, an imperfect authentic cadence just has to violate one of those rules. It can do the other two, but it can't do all three. So if it doesn't do one of them, it's not perfect. It's imperfect. So we're going to write an imperfect authentic cadence. Um, how about let's break all three. We're going to go with the seven. Right there makes it not a perfect cadence. We're not going to be in root position. So if we're in the key of C, this is way back to unit one where we have all the chords. If you look at the seven chord in the key of C, it's B, D, F. Well, let's start with a D on the bottom. F and a B. And then we're going to go to a 1, but we're not going to go to the root position. We're going to go E, G with a C on top. And uh, let's go B, F, and we're going to end on an E. So see how it said the highest note of the one chord must be the tonic. This is the highest note, and it's not a tonic. It, it would end on C like we did. So we broke all three of the rules. Let's see how it sounds. An imperfect authentic cadence breaking all three rules. Yeah, it just doesn't ha sound quite so strong, but there are going to be times when you're not going to want a super strong ending, when you're kind of moving on from there. So now you know what that sounds like. Plagal cadences. This is when a four and sometimes a six, but most of the time a four, resolves to a one chord. This is also called the Amen cadence, or the church cadence, or the religious cadence. Because if you think of that, that old choral music in a big cathedral, when they're singing Amen at the end of all the, most of those pieces, they are a four chord to a one chord. Here's what it sounds like. Do you hear that Amen in there? So that's, that's what that is known for. So you have to write a plagal cadence in the key of C. All right, we're going to go from a four chord to a one chord. Let's do, um, let's do root position. 
F A C to a C E G. And we can use any of these notes for the melody. Let's use A F E. Again, don't worry about if you don't know what I'm doing in the melody. We're going to get to that in the next units. Okay, there's a plagal cadence. This is a deceptive cadence. All right, it's the bait and switch. Remember, uh, like a perfect authentic cadence goes from a five to a one. A five just has that pull and it wants to draw you so much back to the one chord, to home. And this is where a five has that pull to home and it switches and it goes somewhere else. It can be really useful when that's the point that you want to make. You want to make, make people sound like, oh, it's going to resolve and then it doesn't and it goes somewhere else. So a deceptive cadence has, starts with a five and goes to anything else. Here's what that five to six sounds like. You'd think, right, you're expecting that. You don't get that. Okay, now write a deceptive cadence. We'll go five, two, what should we go to? How about uh, three? All right, so let's do five. Um, we'll do that inversion of the five. It's a GBD, and it's going to resolve to three. And we have that reference from unit one, a three chord in the key of C is E, G, B. There's a G and a B right there in common. And we just move the bottom note up one. And let's just say um, B, G, E. All right, five to a three chord. It's kind of like a subtle little resolution because three can feel like tonic, but not nearly as strong as if we would have gone to one. Anyway, that's a deceptive cadence. Those are the four types of cadences. Let me make this a little smaller so we can see them all. A half is anything going to a five. An authentic is a five to a one. Remember, you can have perfect or imperfect following those three rules. Plagal is a four to a one, and deceptive is a five to anything except a one chord. So have fun with these. And now I think if you didn't understand my tagline before, you might. Like a perfect cadence. This is the end.